Hello students, welcome back to another video. This is Dr. Isha Baik right in front of you once again with another paper today. Today we will solve IGCSC 0610 paper 2 to October November 2023 which lasts for about 45 minutes and it carries 40 MCQs which has 4 multiple choices. So with this note let's begin with this paper. Question number 1 says that which processes are the characteristics of all the living organisms. So all of the living organisms, you should know that not all of the living organisms are capable to di digest their food. So this is not the answer. All of the living organisms are uh, capable of carrying out the energy synthesizing process that is known as respiration. So this is correct. And all of the living organisms excrete the toxic materials from their body. So this is also correct. So the answer to this question will be two and three only. All right. So let's move on to question number two. Using binomial system, the Arctic fox is called Velpis legopus which row is correct so you're asking about the genus and the species always remember that the first name the first part of the name of an organism is its genus and the second part of its name is always known as the species all right so the answer to this question is b moving on to question number three which feature is found in viruses so viruses are the acellular parts of the ecosystem which does not carry any cell wall or any organel or any nucleic acid However, it carries a protein code. So this is a very straightforward question with the answer D. Question number four says that which features are, the, are possessed by all plant cells? All plant cells. You should always remember this that not all plant cells have the green pigment. So that not all plant cells have the chloroplast. However, all plant cells possess a cell wall. So the answer to this question will be B. Now. Moving on to question number five, it says that the length of a bacterium is 50 millimeters and the magnification of the diagram is 5000. Which or what is the actual length of that bacterium? So you should, should you should see the units in the answer. As we can see that the units in the answers are micrometers. So we have to convert our this value to micrometers. So how to convert the millimeters to micrometers? We'll multiply the 50 millimeters with 1000 and uh, get 50,000 micrometers as an answer. And we will then uh, solve for the actual length and the answer to this will be 10 because the formula for the magnification is image length, uh, image length over actual length so we will work out for the actual length and then calculate the value for the actual length that will be 10 micrometers now moving on towards question number six which says that the diagram shows an experiment to inves investigate the osmosis in living cells this is an apparatus shown this is a piece of a potato all right and this is a water and this is the glass dish containing a sugar solution right so after some time what will happen the water molecules from from here will move to the potato along the water potential potential gradient and from the potato they will move to this concentrated salt solution resulting in an overall increase in the volume of the concentrated salt solution after 12 hours so this is this was because of the phenomenon of osmosis so what will happen the after 12 hours the concentration of the, the volume of the concentrated sugar solution will increase and the concentration of the uh, and the volume sorry not concentration the volume of the water will decrease so the volume of the water will decrease and the concentrate and the volume of the concentrated salt solution will increase so this answer will be a all right now question number seven says that which statement as about active transport are correct active transport number uh, statement one says it transports particle from low concentration to a high concentration yes it's correct because active transport uh, transport the substances against the concentration gradient not along the concentration gradient right then it always transports particles into the cell not always it could also transport the particle out of the cell then statement three says it involves protein molecules in the cell membrane yes the carrier protein and the uh, carrier protein are responsible for active transport so three is correct so one one is correct and three is correct let's read uh, part four it uses energy from respiration that is absolutely correct as well because atp driven process um this is an atp driven process active transport requires atp so the answer will be one three and four only and this means that the answer is b question number eight says that which row identifies the chemical elements in proteins chemical elements in protein protein are the biomolecules which consists of carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen so all of the uh, so all of the um, all of the biomolecules will be present so the answer will be a right now question number nine says that the table shows some large biomolecules and some small biomolecules so in this question we need to match the biological molecules with their monomers right so let's see which of the columns are matching the correct monomers so cellulose is the monomer of glucose yes this is correct oil are the monomer oil are the monomer fatty acids not amino acids acids so this is wrong glycogen is a monomer of glucose this is also correct and proteins are the monomers of amino acids not ethanol so this is also wrong so the answer to this question will be 
B, 1 and 3 only, right? Now, question number 10 says that the graph shows the results of an experiment to investigate the rate of respiration in an organism in different environmental conditions. So, this is the temperature and this is the rate of respiration. So, we all know that the rate of res the respiration is basically the enzyme control process. So, we have to work out the, or we have to see the enzyme activity along the ranges of temperatures, right? So, we can see, let's first of all interpret the results which says that, uh, which shows that basically that the uh, rate of enzyme is increase enzyme control reaction respiration is increasing till 20 and then it also it keeps increasing till 30 at which it reaches its maximum value after which it starts to decrease and then it gets to zero till 40 degrees right so in any initially what happens is that the kinetic energy is gained by the molecules of enzyme and the substrate and more enzyme substrate complexes are formed because of the increase in temperature due to the increase in kinetic energy till their maximum which, which is known as optimum temperature in this case 30 degrees celsius right so Let's read the question now. What explains the increase in the rate of respiration between 10 to 30 degrees? So 10 to 30 degrees, the rate of respiration is increasing because of the more frequency of effective collisions due to the increased kinetic energy, right? So B statement is the correct. That is describing our answer. However, D is absolutely incorrect because there is no, there, there is not less kinetic energy. Rather, there is more kinetic energy, right? So the B is the correct answer. Question number 11. Question number 11 says, the diagram shows the rate of photosynthesis varies with light intensity. The four curves of different conditions of temperature and carbon dioxide concentration are shown below. This is the rate of photosynthesis and this is light intensity. What limits the rate of reaction at point P? At point P, obviously, we know that light intens in intensity is not limiting the rate of reaction because the rate is not increasing as with the increase of the light intensity, right? However, if we change the if we change the uh, carbon dioxide concentration, so it is increasing, and if we change the temperature, so it is increasing. So this means the temperature and carbon dioxide concentration are the limiting reactants at this point. However, light intensity is not the limiting reactant at this point. So the C will be the right answer. Now, question number 12 says that the diagram shows a cell with groups of bacteria around its edge. The bacteria have moved to the areas of high concentration of, of oxygen. Which processes in cell causes the bacteria to form these groups? So what, what is diagram showing? This is a bacteria. This is spiral shaped chloroplast over here and this is the cell cytoplasm. Right? So the, uh, the question is saying that which process in the cell causing the bacteria to form these groups? Why are these forming these groups? So digestion, bacteria are not doing the digestion at this point. Photosynthesis, yes. Why? Because there are the spiral shaped chloroplasts present over here and bacteria are forming the groups right near the chloroplast, right? So, photosynthesis would be the answer. Question number 13 says that the diagram shows the teeth in the lower jaw of a human. Which tooth is a which tooth is a premolar? So I have labeled this diagram priorly before this video for you. So this is my labeling. So we, all, we all should know and you should learn the labeled diagram of the jaw of a human. Uh, so A, so A represents premolars and B represents incisors, C represents canines and D represents molars and we have to identify the premolar that is absolutely A, right? So moving towards question number 14, some medicines are made into tablets which are coated in a starch-like substance. The coating protects the medicine from the effects of gastric juice. Which enzyme digests the coating and what is, the pro what is produced by this action? So they have already provided us a clue that the coat is made up of starch like substance so obviously what will be the digestion what will be the enzyme for starch amylase will be the, amylase will be the, the enzyme for the starch and what will be the simpler form of the starch obviously the uh, simple reducing sugars or glucose resi residues so the answer will be b lipase is enzyme for digestion of the fats right now question number 15 says the diagram shows a villus the arrows show the direction of flow within the vessels associated with the villus, which vessel carries the blood to the liver, right? So we need to look to uh, we need to look towards the direction of the blood flow, which is uh, already given in the question. So uh, the question says that which vessel carries the blood to the liver. So we have to make sure that we are identif identifying the blood vessel whose direction of the blood is outside the villus, right? So A and B are cancelled, obviously. Then we can see that. D has a lot of networks, so not a lot of networks, right? So this shows that this uh, this vessel is carrying the blood to the liver and this must be the portal vein, right? So the answer to this question will be D. Now question number 16 says, which part of leaf does most water evaporate during the transpiration? So option A says cuticle. This is obviously not the right answer because cuticle is a waxy thick layer which prevents <coughs> the excessive transpiration to occur. Guard cells, no. Is spongy mesophyll cells? Yes, because they have very large air spaces which allows the water to evaporate, right? So the answer to this question will be C. Moving towards question number 17, the photograph <coughs> 
shows a cross section through a sunflower stem. What is the name and function of the tissue called uh, tissue label Z? Where is Z? Z is over here. So we should know that in the stem, this is the way in which the xylem, the xylem and phloem are arranged. So this is the band like, uh, sorry, seed like structure. And xylem is always present on the inner side and phloem is always present on the outer side of the stem, right? So what will be the answer to this question? The answer to this question will be C, xylem. Because xylem transports the mineral ions, not the sucrose, right? Now moving towards question number 18, <coughs> which says that the photomicrograph of uh, the photomicrograph shows some blood cells, and what is the function of P? So we should know that. How do the shapes of different blood cells look like? You have to learn this thing from your IGCSE book, and the P is representing the cell lymphocyte because it has a lot big nucleus, right? This cell is a neutrophil because it has a lobed nucleus, right? So the answer, so the cells with a very large nucleus uh, are known as lymphocytes because their function is to produce antibodies. So the answer to this question will be D. Now, moving towards question number 19, which says that the diagram shows blood vessels associated with the liver, with the liver, all right. What are the blood vessels labeled X, Y, and Z? So X, Y, and Z, X. X is leaving the liver, all right, the, blood, the uh, leaving the liver means this is going towards the heart. So this must be the vein, right? So this is hepatic vein. And then Z, Z says, Z shows that the, the, the blood vessel is carrying the blood to the liver and from the small intestine. So we all know that the blood, the vessel that carries the blood from the gut or from the intestines to the liver are known as hepatic portal vein, right? So X is hepatic vein, Z is hepatic portal vein. So this must be the, this must be the option C because X is representing hepatic vein and Z is representing hepatic portal vein and obviously Y is going to be the hepatic artery. So the answer to this question will be C, right? Now, moving towards question number 20. When a pathogen enters the blood, the immune system uses different mechanisms to destroy the pathogen. The diagram shows one of these mechanisms. All right. The mechanism is uh, antibody uh, and this is X, uh, sorry, this is X, yes, and this is Y. Antibody uh, has, having the receptor that is complementary to the shape of the uh, shape of the pathogen, that is Y, right? Now, which row describes the structures involved? The structure X is obviously antibody, right? So the answer must be from C and D, right? Now, X is made by, obviously, who makes the antibodies? Lymphocytes make the antibodies, right? And what is Y? Y is the antigen that are the markers present on the pathogen, which uh, stimulates the production of the antibodies and the antibodies recognize the antigen and then they destroy them. So the answer to this question will be C. 21 says that what is the composition of expired air as compared to the inspired air, right? So in expired air, the amount of carbon dioxide is more than the, uh, than the inspired air and the amount of oxygen is decreased and obviously the expired air carries more water vapors because um, of the respiration, right? So the answer to this question will be D. Question number 22 says, during exercise, receptors detect the change in the blood and cause the breathing rate to increase. Which change do the receptors detect and what are they uh, and where are they found in the brain, right? So, the change that is detected in the blood is increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide, right? So, the increase in the concentration of the carbon dioxide is stimulus and where are the receptors located? The receptors are located in the, in the brain which stimulate or which tell the lungs that, oh my God, start respiring quickly, start breathing quickly because there is a lot of carbon dioxide present. We need to get rid of this carbon dioxide, right? So, the answer to this question will be A. I hope this was clear to you all. Now, question number 23 says, these cells can convert glucose into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Which statement about this process is correct? So, yeast cells are converting glucose into alcohol and carbon dioxide, and they're asking which of the statement is correct. The alcohol produced can be used to make the bread rise? No, that's carbon dioxide uh, that is used to make the bread rise, not alcohol. B says carbon dioxide produced can be burnt as a biofuel. No, carbon dioxide cannot be burnt as a biofuel. The C says yeast cells are using oxygen for this process. Yeast cells are respiring anaerobically. That's why they're producing alcohol and carbon dioxide, right? Then, then D says the yeast cells are carrying out anaerobic respiration. This is absolutely the correct sentence. The answer to this question will be D. 24 says that 
what is the correct balance equation for one type of respiration so you have to learn this equation by heart only then you will be able to solve this question right so if you have learned the IGCSE equation the, uh, the equation will be you can easily recognize the equation that is in the option C C6H12O6 gives rise to two molecules of C2H5OH plus two molecules of carbon dioxide that is C so you need to learn this equation by heart so which row of 25 says that which row shows an organ and the substance it's, it excretes it's, uh, option A says bladder ex is excreting water so this is wrong Kidney is excreting ions, this is correct. Lung is excreting oxygen, no, it excretes carbon dioxide. Option D says that urethra is excreting urea. No, urethra is not an excrete, like, like urethra is not excreting urea. So the option correct over here is option number B. 25 says that the diagram shows a reflex, sorry, this is question number 26. The diagram shows a reflex arc in human nervous system. The person's finger has just made contact with a sharp object. Which part of the more what which part is a motor neuron? So this is the person's finger, right? And this is the sharp object he has just touched. All right. So what will happen? Let me change the color of my pointer so that you can easily grasp the concept. What happens is when we touch the sharp object, the stimulus is going to travel in this direction, in this to, to, towards the sensory to, with this, through a sensory neuron. All right. This is the sensory neuron, and this, and then this is going to um, relate to the intermediate neuron, which is this neuron is an intermediate neuron, and then the response will be transmitted via the motor neuron to the muscle to remove the finger right away from the sharp object. So, what will be the motor neuron in this case? C will be the motor neuron in this case, right? Now, question number twenty-seven says that which hormone can increase the blood glucose concentration? So, this is a very self-explanatory question that increasing the blood glucose concentration is the job of the glucagon but in this case if you read the question carefully and read the options carefully we have the so let's move to question number 27 which says that which hormones can increase the blood glucose concentration increasing the blood glucose concentration is the job main job of the glucagon but if you read the options carefully you can see that option a has adrenaline and insulin obviously insulin is responsible for decreasing the blood glucose concentration not increasing the blood glucose concentration all right Option B says that adrenaline and glucagon. So yes, this can be the option because adrenaline is released in fight or flight situations in which the body needs more glucose. This is the correct option. This is the best choice. Uh, this is the uh, best choice question. You have to choose the best choice. You could the careless students would have marked option D because they because they have a habit of not reading the questions carefully. But you are very careful students you will be the careful students in the exam room so you will read the questions carefully and you will read the each and all each and every option carefully so the part b option b says adrenaline and glucagon so this will be the right answer all right moving towards question number 28 which says that what is defined as a substance that is taken into the body and modifies or affects the chemical reactions in the body so they are asking us the definition of a drug because drug or medicine is a substance that is taken into the body and then and then it is modified uh, for the effects and then it affects the chemical reaction in the body and then it is excreted out so the option is correct option is option number b question number 29 says what is the disadvantage of sexual reproduction of a poor population in the wild sexual reproduction for a population in the wild so a reduction in genetic diversity no because uh, it increases genetic diversity because sexual reproduction produces genetically variant species. All right. Option B says decrease the ability to adapt to the changes in the environment. No, because since it is increasing the variations, so obviously there are increasing the characteristics which will help the organisms to survive in different environmental conditions. Option C says a reduction in reproduction if individuals are isolated. Yes, this is correct because if we isolate the individuals, we are decreasing their ability to reproduce through sexual reproduction. So option C is a correct option, right? Question number 30 says, pollen grains from a plant were placed into the stigma of a flower of some plant. The lengths of the pollen tubes were measured for four hours. This was repeated using a pollen for a different plant. The results are shown. Mean length of the pollen tubes and pollen from same plant and then there's a pollen from a different plant and time in the hours is given. So you can see that pollen from, this, from the same plant showed very less mean length of the mean length increase of the pollen tubes as compared to the pollen of the different plant which increase which showed the drastic increase in the mean length of the pollen tube over the course of the time so they are asking which statements are correct self pollination does not lead to fertilization 
this is the correct option because this this case happens two says difference in growth of the two types of pollen is an adaptation to increase variation this is also correct right now three says the pollen tubes of a different plant grew fastest between 2 hours and 4 hours from a different plant grew faster between 2 and 4 hours let's check 2 and 4 hours uh, grew fastest no it grew fastest between 1.5 to 2 hours because you can see the gradient the gradient is more steep between 1.5 to 2 hours as compared to the 2 to 4 hours right so 3 is the wrong option the answer to this question will be 1 and 2 only that is B, correct? Question number 31 says that uh, which hormones are released by the placenta during pregnancy? So this is a very learned thing that placenta, the placenta during pregnancy releases progesterone and estrogen. So this will be the correct answer. Question number 32 says what are the cells in the pancreas, the only body cells that produce insulin? The only body cells that, what, uh, say, Again, 32 cancel. What? Why are the cells in the pancreas the only body cells that produce insulin? They are asking us the reasons, reason that why the cells in the pancreas are only present to produce insulin. Because obviously the gene for the insulin must be present over there only and not any other part of the body. Because gene, because insulin is a peptide hormone, right? The peptide hormone are transcribed by the genes. So obviously the cells having the gene for that particular hormone will be able to synthesize the hormone. And that particular cells are only present in the pancreas, so the option will be D, right? Question number 33 says, which statement is correct? Mitosis always produces offspring that are homozygous? No, mitosis is not responsible for producing the offsprings. B says, mitosis produces cells that are genetically identical. This is absolutely correct. Mitosis produces gametes? No, meiosis produces gametes, right? And D is absolutely incorrect as well. So the option will be B. 34 says, what are the sources of genetic variations in the population? Genetic variation, meiosis, obviously correct because it produces genetic vari variant uh, haploid cells. Random mating, yes. And random fertilization, yes. So all three of the options are correct. So the answer will be 1, 2 and 3 only. That is option A. Now, question number 35 says, which row shows the features of xerophytes that reduce water loss? So the xerophytes are the plants that are present in the desert or the arid uh, or the uh, in the arid environment, and they have the leaves that are reduced to the spines, and they have the sunken stomata, and they have a very thick cuticle to prevent excessive respiration. So they have leaves that are reduced to the spine, and they have sunken stomata, and they have very thick cuticle to prevent the excessive transpiration. So we have to choose the option that has tick marked on leaves reduced to the spines and thick cuticle. So the option will be C. Correct. Now, question number 36 says, the diagram shows the food chain tree is eaten by the insect, which is eaten by the blue tit and that is eaten by the hog. Which statement about a pyramid based on this food chain is correct? A says, drawn as a pyramid of biomass, the hog would have the largest biomass, the hog would have the largest bar size. No, insects would be having the largest bar size. Alright, because there are lots of insects on a tree, right? And they are saying, part B says, option B says, drawn as a pyramid of energy, tree would have the largest bar size. Yes, the largest and the, the highest amount of energy is possessed by the organisms of the lowest trophic level. So, the tree will be having the highest amount of energy, so the answer will be B. I hope this was clear enough. 37 says, during the nitrogen cycle, which process releases nitrogen gas into the air? So, the denitrification is the process which increases the nitrogen gas in the air. This is a self-explanatory and a very learning-based MCQ. So you need to learn the nitrogen cycle by heart as well. Question number 38 says, red-green color blindness is a sex-linked disease characterized, characteristic caused by a recessive allele. So the recessive sex-linked disease and recessive allele means that it is uh, expressed express in the homozygous forms only. Which prediction can be made out about the children of a woman who is color blind and a man with a normal vision. All right. So this is the pedigree. I have uh, no, no, not a pedigree. This is a Punnett square. I have just drawn based on the question that which said that the woman had uh, the color. The woman was color blind, and since it was a recessive, so woman was homozygous for color blind gene, and then a man was with a normal vision was present was mated. 
with all right so the they produce offsprings in which um the daughters were supposed to be the carriers 50% of the daughters were the carriers means they were, had no color blindness in the phenotype and 50% of the boys were affected with color blindness right so the option b is uh, basically representing our punnett square which says that boys will be color blind and girls will be having normal vision right so the answer to this question will be option b question number 39 says one method of conserving fish stocks is to have minimum mesh size for fishing nets how is mesh size chosen to conserve particular fish species so the mesh size is chosen in a way that hole in the net must be large enough to allow the young fish to escape right so we have to choose mesh size in a certain way that holes are large enough to allow the large fish to get trapped and small fish to escape right so the option d is saying option d is representing the correct statement and the correct concept so the answer to this question will be option d moving towards the last question 40 diagram shows a hu how human uh, gene can be inserted into a bacterium so what is happening the gene is obtained gene is removed from a chromosome and the bacterium plasmid is removed and it is cut then the gene and the plasmid are mixed together and the plasmid is now transformed into the recombinant plasmid with the human gene inserted into it then the plasmid is again implanted into the bacteria and then bacteria are allowed to clone and they produce a lot of insulin or a lot of hormone right so which row shows the correct processes at 1 2 3 and 4 so restriction enzymes are used to cut the genes and cut the plasmids right so one and two both uh, in both one and two processes the restriction enzyme will be used only one option is representing one and two in the in this column that is option number b and this must be the right option all right and uh, the second column says using ligase enzymes so ligase enzyme used to glue two things together in the in the in the genetics in medical genetics so to, to glue the recombinant so to, to glue the human gene with the plasmid we will use ligase that is occurring in step number 3 right and then multiplication bacteria is occurring in step number 4 as you can all see so the, this is making the option b as a correct answer right so this was it this was a paper here we finished the paper If you have any questions or queries, you can always comment in the comment section below, or always email me on the email uh, email address provided over here. So uh, we will meet in the next video with a new paper. Till then, goodbye and good luck.